Hello again, everyone. Mr. Hadley here. Today's art lesson is inspired by another story I really love to read, and it's called A World of Your Own, and it's by Laura Carlin. Now, this is a story I really, really enjoy because this story calls upon all of your imagination. It is really, really cool. What she does in this story is she actually creates, you can probably guess it, a world of your own using what I just said, her imagination. And that's what I really want you all to do today, is use your imagination, dig really deep inside of it. I know you all have it. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna read you the story first, and then we're gonna draw a world of our own. All right? A World of Our Own by Laura Carlin. Hello. This is me, Laura, standing in a line. I hate standing in lines. To make things more interesting, I imagine a world of my own. I'd still have lines in my world, but they might look more like this, or this, or this. Let me show you how I draw and make my world by looking at what already exists. Even in my world, I need to get out of bed in the morning, but I don't want any alarm clocks. Well, not any ordinary alarm clocks. I like to invent different ways to start the day. What gets you out of bed in the morning? Could you invent an alarm clock that you can see, hear, or even smell? To create my world, I start by looking around me. This is my house in the real world. First, I copy the basic shape. Then, I think of ways to make it more exciting, such as giving it a few more floors. That way, if friends come over to stay, they can have an entire floor to themselves. Stairs seem really boring, so I add slides instead, and bigger windows so I can see what's going on outside. I want a swimming pool too, obviously. I also want my house to be high off the ground in order to look very important. So I put it on top of a large tree with a rope ladder for getting in and out. And finally, here's my house in my world. Draw an outline of your house. Now draw where you would like to live. What's your house made of? Does it have walls or windows? How do you get in and out? Next, I like to think about what kind of neighborhood my house is in. Just like in the real world, some of my buildings in my world look pretty dull from the outside, but things aren't always what they seem. Take, for example, my office supply shop, which actually sells shoes for superheroes. And this is a house on my street that really scares me. But it's actually just full of kittens. Look closely. There are 131 in total. Inside this perfectly ordinary looking building are rooms full of all the people and animals I'd want to live near. I've designed the rooms in all sorts of shapes and sizes to suit the needs of each guest. For example, a giraffe needs a tall room, a bird would like a tree to sit on, and my brother would definitely want a TV in his. If you'd like somewhere for your friends to stay, take a piece of paper and draw blocks of different sizes. Now fill them in with animals or people of all shapes and sizes. Do your guests require windows, trap doors, plants, slides, or swings? You might want to collect different kinds of paper, material, or patterns to decorate the rooms with. And you'll have just made your first hotel. My world has other kinds of buildings too, just as factories made of things. In my world of all factories have to be the shape of whatever they make. This is so they conform to the building regulations. This one makes pencils. This one makes baked beans. And this one makes spaghetti. Choose three things you can't live without and imagine what the factories that make them would look like. Do they have to be tall or short or really big or tiny? Even in my world, you sometimes don't know what to do with the day. So you might need some public buildings to visit. They are called public buildings because everyone can go inside. You could go to the library and borrow not only books, but also toys, hairstyles, and even voices. 
Or if you're brave enough, you could go visit really dangerous animals. The most dangerous reptile ever. What do you like to do during the day? What places would you like to visit? How about a gallery of different noses or a museum of tree houses? Believe it or not, there's a school in my world too. I attend the first Tuesday of every month to learn very important skills, such as face painting and how to fit more than one cookie in my mouth at a time. Here are some other lessons taught at my school. What important things would you learn in your school? My world not only has spectacular buildings, it's also full of animals. For example, everyone has a dog in my world. Even the dogs have dogs. I've drawn each dog differently. It makes sense because like us, every dog is different. Apparently dinosaurs become extinct millions of years ago, so I've invented them back. Sometimes people think my drawings of crocodiles look like snakes or my dogs like horses. I prefer to see myself as an inventor. You can be an inventor too. List six of your favorite animals or insects, draw them, or find photographs of them. Now, by cutting them up and rearranging them, you can invent three new animals. In the real world, we all look different from each other. Everyone looks different in my world, too. I draw and make them different ways to show this. I see a woman who's a bit shy, so I could use colored pencils to draw her softly. No such problem for this girl. This man is strong and confident. He needs a solid and strong mind to tell you so. And this man is just sunburned. This person looks a bit glum. You can tell by his hunched shoulders. But it's okay. This boy is rushing to keep him company. And to make him look like he's in a rush, I've drawn him quickly and with energetic lines. You can tell a lot about a person by how you draw or make them. This is my dad. He's on a straw because he's very tall and slim. Granny is old and fragile and sometimes falls down. So does my baby brother. And here's my mom who's tiny. Now think about three people you know. How could you draw and make them to show what they look like? It's important not to have traffic jams in my world. People tend to get angry in traffic jams. One of my favorite forms of transportation in the real world is the train. I may as well improve the train for my world because I can. So in order to get a better view, passengers are allowed to sit on top of it and it can be any shape I like. In fact, it can be the shape and size of all my favorite animals. What is your favorite type of transportation? Can you think of ways to make it even better? Before I go to bed, I look over the world I created today, and I'm pretty sure friends will want to visit, so I'm going to create a flag so that my world can be seen from far away. My flag has to represent my world, so I've chosen five of my favorite things to put on it. I also only use three colors. This makes it look more sophisticated. Tomorrow I can start again and make a whole new world. You can start your own world as soon and as many times as you would like. And don't forget to look at real life for inspiration. Is that a lamppost you can see outside your window? Or a tower? Or just an uptight snake? Thank you so much for following along with the story. I really love this book, A World of Your Own by Laura Carlin, because I just love, uh, again, how much it calls upon your imagination. You know, this book calls upon, you know, how you want the things that you see in real life to actually look. Meaning that what Laura Carlin does is in the story, you know, she sees real life things like cars or people or food, uh, favorite things of hers, and she transforms them into things uh, to make them her own, right? For instance, let's go back in the story just a little bit, all right? Right here, actually. Right here. Uh, in this story, she's creating factories. Factories made of the things that the factories actually make. I think that's brilliant. Look, this factory makes pencils. And it's the shape of a pencil. And the baked beans. And the spaghetti factory. I think that's awesome. So... In order to do this drawing, you know, again, you can make this drawing however you want to make it. I'm just going to show you one way of how to go about this project, okay? Uh, you're going to need, all you're going to need for this project is a paper and a pencil, all right? Something to draw on and something to write with. 
So before we actually do get to the drawing part though, uh, I want us to think about what Laura Carlin said uh, in the story. At the very end of the story, she said, she wrote rather, Tomorrow I can start again and make a whole new world. You can start your own world as soon and as many times as you like. And don't forget to look at real life for inspiration. So she gets excited when she sees things that exist in real life. Right now, while you're watching this video, look around you. What things do you see in real life? Maybe you see a table. Maybe some books or a plant. Maybe you see some puzzle pieces, maybe some silverware, maybe a couch, or maybe some pillows on that couch. Maybe some stairs, you walk down the stairs, maybe you see a lamp, maybe you see a toothbrush, or a brush for your hair, perhaps. This brush is kind of broken, but it's okay. Maybe you see some windows, too, and the more you look out the windows, maybe you see some rain or some cloudy skies, and the more you look out that window, you might see some leaves. Then when you look at those leaves, maybe you see some trees, or maybe you see a truck, a truck with really big wheels. Or maybe you see some buildings outside, or maybe some cars on the road, or just a road. Or maybe you see the woods. That was a lot of things, but I really just want you to start to think about, you know, everyday objects, everyday things. Again, I want you to look around at things that you see right now, and how could you draw them the way that you want them drawn. Would you draw them smaller? Would you make them bigger? All right, so let's get to this drawing. Again, you only need a paper and a pencil for this. All right, this is only one way to go about this lesson. You can make it your own. You don't have to do it this way, but the drawing should be a world of your own. All right, let's get started. All right, so once you have your paper ready, something to draw on and something to draw with, I have a pencil. Please write your name and then flip your paper over so your name is on the back, all right? And then what I would like to show you is my example of a world of my own. All right, this is just one example of something that can come from this lesson, okay? Now, I can't stress this enough. This drawing definitely came from my imagination. The word imagination. What is it? What does it mean to imagine? Well, for me, I think imagination means seeing things a little differently and seeing things that nobody else sees. All right? It can come from in your head. It can come from the things that you read. It can come from movies or TV shows that you see. It can come from you directly, your imagination, inside your head. You have this ability to change things, to see things and how they look, but to also use your imagination to maybe make it your own way, right? And I think in a way, that's kind of what art is. That's kind of the process of art. All right, so anyways, my example. This says inside, and this says outside. I use my imagination to create a world of my own that's inside, and then my imagination to create a world that's outside. So you remember all those, all those things that I told you that I saw in real life? There were a lot of them, right? Yeah. I used those things that I saw, and I put them in my drawing. And right here, I got some stairs made from concrete. I got stairs made of bricks. I got ice cream cones that float, all right? So you have to go up these stairs, past the floating ice creams, and I have a slide right here that's, my favorite color is blue and green. I also like red. And you get the slide all the way to the rainbow books here and you pass a floating ice cream, then you go up the stairs made of clay to the world of puzzles. Now on the outside right here, in my imaginary world, in my world on the outside, the birds are bigger than the planes and the birds are flying high above the leaves. And in my world, in the outside world, the leaves are bigger than the trees. And in my world, the clouds right here are very low to the ground. And also, in my world outside, these drops right here, they're supposed to be raindrops, it rains backwards, meaning that it doesn't rain from up. The rain comes from below and goes up. 
So this is just one example of what can become of this project, okay? Again, you can draw this however way you wanna make it, all right? Now I'm gonna show you how I went about this, okay? So the first thing I did after I wrote my name and flipped it over was I just folded this piece of paper right in half like this, all right? Just to give you an idea. Again, if, if you're already drawing on your own, you go right ahead, make a world of your own. Fold it right back out. Make sure my crease that just a little bit more. Cool. All right. Now, as I said, we have to use our imagination for this, all right? And I really, really want you to fill up the whole paper, okay? You see my example? That paper is basically filled up, right? <laughs> I really want you to do your best at filling the entire paper up. All right, so I'm gonna write the word inside. And then I'm gonna write the word outside. And I'm going to start to use, remember, I'm going to start to use the things that I see in everyday life, such as the stairs, all right? I'm going to use what I see, the stairs, and I'm actually going to then go back to my drawing. And I'm going to draw my own version of stairs. What kinds of lines are those? What do you think? What kind of lines are those? I'm also going to make these stairs have these kinds of lines in them too because I want these stairs to be brick. In my own world, in the inside, these stairs are brick. Do you have stairs in your world? What do they look like? Or maybe you don't have stairs. Maybe you have a squiggly slide made of macaroni or spaghetti. <laughs> All right, after that, now I know I didn't say it, but I know, I know I didn't show it, but in my imagination, I think, you know, I'm thinking about foods that I really like, and I'm thinking in my inside world, I got floating ice cream cones. All right. No, I'm not going to draw this whole thing right now, all right? Because that would take literally a lot of time to do, all right? And I want you to start drawing your own. So what I want you to do, um, I'm gonna actually going to I'm going to speed this drawing up right now. And what I would like, what I would really love for you to do is again look at the things around you. You know, what kind of world would you create for yourself, all right? So I'm going to keep drawing. I'm just going to speed this up a little bit, all right? The magic of video. I'm gonna stop right there for a second because I want to take it back just about a week ago. Remember some of the shapes that we drew, right? Well, you might find it easy, easier to come up with things for your drawing if you remember back to what you could draw before, right? What did we learn? Does that bird look familiar, do you think? Maybe that tree looks familiar? Whoa. Maybe that tree looks familiar? What do you think? Just think about back to shapes, all right? Use your imagination. All right, cool. I'm gonna speed it up again. Keep drawing, you're doing awesome. All right, so I've finished my drawing of my world, of my own world. Uh, it's okay if you're still working on yours, you know, if you haven't already and you're still watching this for inspiration, that's fine. What things can you look at that are around you right now that you can then use your imagination for to make your own? Remember, fill up the entire paper, okay? Do your best to fill the entire paper, all right? So this is my example here. 
and this is it colored in. I would really love for you to have your uh, your drawing colored in too, you know, whatever colors you have, crayon, marker, colored pencils work really well. I use colored pencils for this. Um, but again, think about what you want your world to look like, all right? It doesn't have to be inside or outside. It doesn't have to look like this. This was just one idea to go about it, okay? All right, and if you're stuck on how to draw something, ask for help, but also remember back to our very first lesson of how to draw certain things you might remember, all right? Shapes, remember, all right? So I can't wait to see what all of you come up with. A world of your own. Use your imagination, have fun with this, all right? Thank you so much for following along. I hope you enjoyed the lesson, I know I did. Uh, remember to send me anything that you make. I wanna see it. Your project did not have to turn out the way that mine turned out. Remember, this is your drawing. I really want you to feel like you can use your own imagination for this lesson here, all right? A world of your own. Think about the things that inspire you, right? Remember, think about your favorite season. Think about your favorite kind of car or toy or color or food or anything and make it your own. All right, I really wanna see all of the work that you make. It's gonna turn out awesome no matter what, okay? So thank you so much for watching and following along. Uh, look for the next video soon. I will see you then. Bye.